Elijah Craig. He's gonna be a pretty trustworthy guy, right? I mean, he was a reverend. <laughs> Neat Nation, welcome back. I'm Drew P. Stoked to be talking whiskey with you today, particularly as we go over the whiskey and the brand that is Elijah Craig, which is one of my favorites. Now let me be upfront and frank. Uh, I am being paid no money by Elijah Craig or Heaven Hill to make this video. I just like the whiskey so much. We've got a lot to cover, so we're gonna waste no time getting into this thing. Now, firstly, we're really just going to breeze over this, but the legend of Elijah Craig, I mean, this is the legend slash marketing pitch of Heaven Hill regarding Elijah Craig is that he's the father of bourbon, that this guy was the first one to put spirit into new charred oak barrels and go like, wow, that's uh, it's pretty good when you burn the crap out of the barrel and then put the whiskey inside and then take the whiskey out later. It's pretty, pretty good. Now, was he, is he the father of bourbon? Was he the first one to put his whiskey into charred oak casks? Uh, maybe. We don't know. It's really kind of like whatever. But, I mean, it's a cool story. And I guess that's kind of what matters when you're coming up with naming a bourbon. Personally, I like the naming style of like a barrel bourbon or a new riff. It's like, you know what? We're not going to try and invent this whole backstory about some old fart we're just going for it we're trying to make darn good whiskey that's a safe marketing pitch but whatever now this is a brand that's been owned by heaven hill since i think it was the the 50s but this whiskey didn't first launch until the mid 1980s now that's interesting it's interesting because it's now a brand that's been around a while we're talking 35 years but it's particularly interesting because it launched in the middle of the 80s, which, I mean, as far as bourbon goes, there wasn't a lot of good happening in bourbon then. I mean, that's kind of the butt crack of bourbon as far as, like, overall consumption goes. So it was unique for Heaven Hill to be launching what was a premium brand, and I think still is a premium brand at the time. Like, let's remember back, 1986... Up until 2016, Elijah Craig was a 12-year age-stated bourbon that looked more or less something like this. Granted, this is probably a 2015 bottle, but it's got a big red 12 on it, which Elijah Craig has always been, or was always, famous for. This big 12-year age statement, and was as positioned at its launch as a premium bourbon product. And man, it was. It was. But 1986, I mean, Top Gun came out in 1985. This bourbon's been around as long as hammer pants and mullets. I mean, my dad graduated college in 1985. That is old. So props to Heaven Hill for taking a risk and uh, releasing a premium product in a particular time in bourbon's history where there wasn't much demand for bourbon in general, let alone premium bourbons. It's like they could look down the tunnels of time and see what bourbon would become, and they crushed it. And so, so it was that Elijah Craig existed for quite some time, quite some time, without much change. There was just this one Elijah Craig product, and that is until 1994, when Heaven Hill, having taken a step and a risk already by releasing a 12-year age-dated premium small-batch bourbon product, goes a step further and says, okay, we're in the 90s. Maybe we see a smidgen more interest in bourbon than we did in the 80s. We're going to go ahead and push this envelope a little bit, and we're going to drop a heavy. And that would be the Elijah Craig 18-year-old single barrel. Now, this product is either loved or hated by bourbon geeks. To me, it's pretty awesome because it's an 18-year-old bourbon, and it's an 18-year-old expression of one of my favorite bourbons. But it's not for everybody. It does tend to be pretty oak-forward. Like the Elijah Craig, standard Elijah Craig small batch, definitely has some oak, particularly the older 12-year versions. The oak is, is pronounced. It's very sweet, though. Minimal spice, a smidge of nuttiness, but it's a classic bourbon profile, for sure. 
the 18 year old takes that oak note and turns it way up. I mean, six extra years in a barrel is going to do that. One of the major criticisms levied against the 18 year Elijah Craig is that it's only ever been bottled at 90 proof. Bourbon geeks um, lobby and complain and, and try and express energy to get it released at barrel proof. I mean, that would be pretty interesting, but you almost never see anybody release a super aged product at barrel proof. The closest you kind of see anybody get is the Knob Creek picks that have come in around 15 years. I think maybe I heard of one getting released at 16 years. And then Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, particularly Stag or Weller, have been as high as like 16 or 18 years at barrel proof. But that's it. And you rarely see those products that high of age. Now, could something like Elijah Craig 18 benefit from, you know, a little bit higher proof? Maybe. It'd be crazy intense, probably crazy oaky. But, I mean, I'd love to try it. Don't get me wrong. Does it absolutely need to be barrel proof? No. Is this for everybody? No, absolutely not. Is there variation from barrel to barrel? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that's interesting is a lot of super old products like this don't tend to get released as single barrels. Um, and this may be even better if they did actually like blend it to achieve a flavor profile, but you know, I guess that just brings more intrigue to the game because it's a wild card. If you do buy a bottle of Elijah Craig 18, what's it gonna be like? Is it going to be relatively tame? Is it going to have some extra spice to help cut through that oak? Or are you getting an oak bomb? Well, who knows? So 1994, this drops. That was the year my youngest brother was born. I mean, mid-90s. Those are good years. And as I mentioned, it's like Heaven Hill was doing a great job anticipating where bourbon was going. So like it could see that the bourbon boom was coming. Which, I mean, it took another 14 years or so for the thing to really, really take off. But yeah, eventually it did. And yeah, we cannot now get enough of premium bourbon products, particularly from Heaven Hill. So then the line remains unchanged for then another 19 years. Now, we may have seen uh, an Elijah Craig 23 drop between 1994 and 2013. Um, but by and large, the only two products you saw regularly were this one and this one. And then in 2013, Bourbon Geeks got their way, and we saw the first release of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Now, it did not look like this uh, at first. It looked like this with a black label and a barrel on it. Really, really cool bottle. The It's Bourbon Night peeps uh, referred to this bottle style as kind of a pirate bottle. I like that. I thought that was a really good description of what this bottle looked like. The barrel proof version it particularly looks very piratey. I had one chance to buy one once as the bottle style was shifting, but it was when I was first getting into bourbon. Uh, it was $70, and I was like, I think that's above MSRP, and then I didn't buy it. And then I regretted it because... Um, well, I'll never get one again, probably. But oh well, because the bottle, though the bottle style has changed, which we'll talk more about that in a minute, the bourbon inside is still fantastic. I mean, as good as Elijah Craig is at 12 years old, or was at 12 years old, the barrel proof just turns the, no the notch up on everything. Here you get more oak out of that expression, but here you get more everything. It's just boom, in your face uncut, unfiltered, 12-year-old Elijah Craig. And it tends to pack a wallop. Most of the releases I see in here are in the 130 proof range, 130 to 140. In the old bottle style, there were a couple that qualified for hazmat status, and that is that they came in above 140 proof, which is like, Whoa. <laughs> I mean, this one is 132.8. I think I had a 136 uh, proof version. And man, it's, it's intense. Intense, but so delicious. And you can still find this bourbon, which is amazing. It's on the shelves. You can go get it. You're going to drop about 70 for it right now, but it's totally worth it. Before we move on from 2013 and talk about the, the dark days of the Elijah Craig brand, I just want to thank you guys for joining, and if uh, you like this video, just get down and like the video and subscribe to my channel, because you're going to catch tons of other bourbon videos, American whiskey videos, and some scotch videos, kind of like this, talking about all things whiskey. 
I will be doing some live streams in the days ahead on YouTube. Look forward to that and just continuing to evolve the kinds of videos that you see put out by the Drew P. Whiskey channel. All right, let's get back into this thing. 2016. Well, 2016 saw some press releases from Heaven Hill that the 12 year age statement would go away. And that was a sad day. Now, granted, that was right as I was getting into bourbon. I didn't fully understand what was happening. But what we saw throughout the year 2016 is this front age statement moved to the back. And, and it would just say, after 12 years in the making or 12 years aging, there were a couple different label iterations. But the 12-year age statement moved to the back. And then it went away completely. And this would be an example of that. Now, the whiskey between these two bottles, remarkably similar. Granted, this one's not open, but I had one that was open. And it's amazingly similar, the difference from here to here. And we're talking about only a year's worth of difference in the release of these two bottles. But it was a bummer that the age statement went to the back and then went away because, hey, I mean, a 12-year age statement on a bourbon is something special. Like, these days, you pay a lot for a 12-year age statement, at least $70. <laughs> and you used to be able to get it every day for $20. It's just a product of the changing of the times and the popularity of bourbon coming back. I mean, because bourbon came back. Like, 2016, bourbon was booming already. 2020, it's redonk. Like 2016, you didn't see YouTube channels talking about bourbon every single day, and yet here we are. <laughs> so the well-aged socks for a lot of distilleries, including Heaven Hill, just became depleted. They didn't have it every day. Whereas they could continue to produce 8 to 12, which is now what they say Elijah Craig is, 8 to 12-year-old small batch bourbon without really any, any problem. And yes, it's true, since Elijah Craig made the swap to this bottle style, granted this is a 375 milliliter, they've been able to keep it on the shelves everywhere. And I don't have a problem finding this, you know, around $25, sometimes as low as 20 when it goes on sale. And the quality is still fantastic. Is it unbelievable no because it's a 25 dollar bourbon is it as good as this well if you hang out till the end i'll do a side by side between the just age stated removed small batch from 2016 and a 2020 bottling of the 375 milliliter small batch we'll compare them see how they are now in my independent tastings of these, this is still really, really good whiskey. But it's been a big shift, and I get the people who drank Elijah Craig for a long time would be bummed about the change, but hey, they live on. And when Elijah Craig made the change to this bottle style, they said, hey, listen, we're going to make the barrel proof easier to find. We're going to make it more readily available, and we're going to keep it at 12 years, and it's got the age statement on the side, which was a good move by them. So we still have a great small batch, everyday whiskey, 8 to 12-year-old, which is crazy for $25, and a $70 12-year-old barrel proof product. So they're still crushing it. They have taken care of us. One of the other things that Elijah Craig has done pretty well is that in the standard small batch now, you can find single barrels, store picks, pretty easily. Like, they happen on the regular, and some of them will come with an age statement, too. So those two are $25, and they're a single barrel of Elijah Craig, and most of them are really good. I had one that was not good, but I'm going to fault the store for picking bad barrels. Most of the Elijah Craig barrel picks I've had have been really swell, and they're an incredible value. So you guys know I'm a big fan of store picks, and uh, Elijah Craig is no different. Now, it would be amazing if we had Elijah Craig barrel-proof store picks, which, who knows, maybe one day, um, but not yet. So these are the days that we live in. We've moved from this guy, well, a couple different label changes over the years before it came to this. The age statement dropped. Small batch, lives on. We got barrel proof readily available. And the 18 year, while it is hard to find, I'm sure you can come across one if you look hard enough. And what's nice about this is that actually the secondary value on the Elijah Craig 18 is not absolutely insane like a lot of other limited release whiskeys. Why is that? 
I don't know. <laughs> I think Elijah Craig does not get the love it deserves on so many levels. But if you're watching this video, this is a PSA that this is some of the best bourbon that you can find. And just because you can find it doesn't make it less yummy. So you should get Elijah Craig. And again, I'm not paid to say that. One other release before we get to 2020, because things have started to change now in 2020. This is where we've been. This is where we are. But there's, there's getting, it's getting a little spicy in the Elijah Craig world. But before we get there, there is one other very niche Elijah Craig product, and that is the Elijah Craig Barrel Select. That's a distillery only release. It's basically Elijah Craig barrel proof, um, but I'm pretty sure this is chill filtered. And it's not barrel proof, it's 125 proof. And uh, Denny Potter, when he was the master distiller, talked about that release and he said, really, it's just something fun to have when people visit the distillery. Uh, it is good. It's probably not as good as a lot of the barrel proof releases I've had, but the bottle is pretty cool. I mean, they call this a grenade, not they, but we do, bourbon geeks, because it kind of looks like a grenade, but it's a barrel shaped bottle. And I think some, some more people should utilize a bottle shape like that on a 750 mil because it's pretty cool. So if you're stopping in the distillery, I think it's $30 for that 200 milliliter bottle. That's a little bit much, but it's super fun to have. I had one, drank one, and then lost the bottle, which was a bummer because I wanted to keep it. Now to 2020. When Heaven Hill just decided to ride the snot out of the Elijah Craig brand, which I do not think is a mistake. Like we've started seeing Elijah Craig, that brand, show up in places that bourbon brands don't often show up. For instance, I've seen it as like the backdrop at Major League Baseball games, going even back to 2019. You know, when you, you got that view of the pitcher and the catcher from center field, and then they've got the little ads there against the backstop. You know, it was Viagra for a long time. Now it's Elijah Craig, that's cool. Also, podcasts, for instance, the No Laying Up Golf podcast, great podcast, they're sponsored by Elijah Craig. So Elijah Craig is uh, trying to get out there. Like, Heaven Hill is riding this brand as a flagship brand. For a long time, Evan Williams was kind of it, but Elijah Craig is becoming more and more pronounced and like a, a key component of the Heaven Hill marketing strategy, which I think is wise because the product's so dang good. With that focus, We've also seen a line extension. First, we saw the introduction of Elijah Craig Rye. Now, the initial release of Elijah Craig Rye was not widely distributed. I think only a few states got it, which was a bummer for us in Wisconsin because we tend to get things pretty dang late, so that sucked. Um, and I heard mixed reviews on that one. Heard that it was better than Rittenhouse, which is the bottle in bond, like bottom shelf rye from Heaven Hill, and not as good as Pikesville, which is the six year old uh, 110 proof. I knew it, it was on my head 110 proof, uh, you know, top shelf rye from Heaven Hill. So, you know what? I bet we could add a little water and proof this thing down to 94 proof and probably get a pretty quick picture of what Elijah Craig rye tastes like, but I look forward to getting a bottle at some point when it's more widely distributed because uh, the press releases initially said that it would eventually reach a, a much wider distribution. It just has, hasn't happened yet. And then there was the Elijah Craig special release this year, which I did get a couple bottles of actually, and that is the Toasted Barrel. Put that there. Now the toasted barrel, this was supposedly fully mature Elijah Craig small batch that went into toasted barrels for a little extra aging time. New toasted barrels. And uh, again, mixed reviews on this one, but I gotta tell you, I wasn't mixed. I liked it. And I didn't like Michter's toasted barrel bourbon, so I'm kind of hit or miss on the double aging. I can take or leave uh, Woodford Reserve double oak. But this one, to me, the oak didn't like take over. It wasn't the only thing that we're talking about here. It's certainly prevalent, but I get a great mouthfeel. It's not drying. It's like toasted marshmallows and graham crackers. It's like a s'more in a bottle. 
Notice I say shmore. It's more fun to say shmore than s'more. Pro tip. So I thought this was a wonderful release, which is why I was glad to get a couple bottles. Glad to have one when this one runs out, because I've been drinking it a fair amount. And it's nice to just add some variety to the standard Elijah Craig offering. So, I mean, as you can see, I clearly love the brand. I love the flavor profile that they've been able to offer over the years, and I'm excited for more product innovations. Like anything that comes close to the quality level of standard Elijah Craig and the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, I'm happy to try in other expressions. So we'll see what's next. We'll see what Elijah Craig holds for us in the future. But I mean, the Reverend's done good. So we've come to the end. And if you've hung with it, great. I appreciate that. Good for you. Bonus segment now, and that is the taste off between Elijah Craig Small Batch, the current version, and the Elijah Craig Small Batch that um, immediately replaced the 12 year age statement, which as I've said, I think tastes exactly like the 12 year age stated product. So let's do it. I've got this Mondo pirate, pirate bottle version, and I've got the small batch. This has toasted in it, so. Let's get some clean glasses. I'm not doing this blind because we're going to keep it brief. It's really just to note the differences here. Get more richness, smoky oak, brown sugar, caramel on here. This one is more nutty. Vanilla, it does, there's a, a scent you get um, with youthful spirits and it's kind of grain forward and it's more pronounced here. Like I don't get any of it here. So like this one does smell younger. If you ever smell like white dog, fresh spirit off the still, you can get it in a lot of young whiskeys and it, it's almost rare that it completely goes away. Ethanol, corny, Shows up a little bit here. Um, does not show up here, but I get wood mill, so it's a little bit sawdusty. Super sweet, spicy, it's got wood influence, but it's just right down the middle. I mean, it tastes like an eight-year-old, really solid, 94 proof bourbon. One you can drink pretty much every day. There is a depth here that is not here. Same basic flavor profile, but it feels like that extra couple of years of aging is really, really helpful for Elijah Craig. Like this is good, every day really good. This is phenomenal. I mean, it's so rich and like sweet baking spices of clove, a little bit of cinnamon, and then it's got cocoa, and it's got oak, and all kinds of sweet sugary, it's, it's creamy too, like creme brulee, vanilla beans, with the caramelized sugar on top, you burn that, it's crispy, this is just so good, and the, these have been sitting around, sitting on a few shelves around me in Milwaukee for $47, so I have this one and I have a backup, and I'm gonna nurse it, cause man, <laughs> it's like you, you, this is so undervalued, and people just still look at it. Look, if you see one of these things in the pirate bottle, buy it. If you open it and you don't like it, and you're like, dude, you steered me wrong. Well, what? <laughs> I'm sorry. Send it to me. I'll send you something else. We'll we'll figure it out. But it's not my fault. Your tongue is broken. So yeah. Uh, clear winner for sure. Super good, uh, super better. So again, thanks for hanging out with me. It was fun. This has been Elijah Craig. This is everything related to Elijah Craig. Uh, famous bourbon brand and the hype lives up to the name. 
So stay tuned on my channel. Like I said earlier, we're gonna have some live streams coming up. Uh, you're watching if you're watching this on Monday or early in the day Tuesday, the days it was released. Check me out on the Bourbon Junkies live stream Tuesday at eight Central Time. It's gonna be good times over there with those guys. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, be sure and do that so you can get you know the updates. Hit that bell notification too. YouTube has been a little bit wonky, but you're supposed to get notified when I drop a new vid. If you hit that bell notification, I would appreciate it if you did that. That helps share my videos with other bourbon-loving peeps. Uh, I will be producing something close to this shirt in the coming days, and we'll make that available for purchase. So if you want to support the channel, well, one, share the videos. That would be great. And then you can look forward to these shirts coming out. I will get them to you. It will be awesome. So thanks, peeps. Have a good evening, and remember to keep it neat.